Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this weekend, we are celebrating the 24th week in Ordinary Time, and I'm so glad that you can join us for Mass. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, look upon us, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Responses. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, 
so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whenever we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, and proclaim his gospel worthily and well. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with, you. with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. The master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt so will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel is, is one about mercy and, and forgiveness, but I have to say it's, it's one of the times where I really don't think that the words that we, re that we hear really capture what Jesus was saying originally. Because the translation that, that we read, it says that you know a servant came in and he owed his master a huge amount. But it doesn't say exactly how much that huge amount is. And I have to say, I did a little research and I looked at this and I found out what the original uh, wording, what it says originally. And what, what he owed his master was 10,000 talents. 
Now, in our day and age, we don't really know what a talent is. So I had to do more extensive research. That means I Googled it. And, uh, and, and I said, how much is a talent? And it turns out that a talent was worth 67 pounds of gold. Now, why 67? I have no idea, but that's what it was. 67 pounds of gold. So I Googled again and I looked up how much is a pound of gold worth in today's dollars? Best I can figure, it's a little over $15,000 a pound. So I multiplied that by 10,000 and I came up with a number. It's over $10 billion. So this guy owes his master over $10 billion. And like there's an extra $50 million in there too somewhere. So it's like, first of all, how did he get a debt that big? I don't know. But you can see where it's crazy when he's saying to the master, oh, just give me a little time and I'll pay it off. I'm sure the people originally hearing this parable were saying he's never going to be able to pay that off. He couldn't pay that off in 10,000 years. You know, he couldn't pay that off. Ten, more than $10 billion. In fact, by comparison, I looked up and the, the King Herod the Great and all of his territories, it was only worth a little less than $1 billion in today's money. So this guy owes 10. And then when he goes out, being forgiven a debt of $10 billion plus, he meets the servant, and it says in, the, in the, the, our, our translation, a much smaller amount. Well, what was the much smaller amount? Well, it turns out it was, it was about a, a, 100 denarius. So in our day, it would be worth about $100. So more than $10 billion and $50 million and $100. That's the, that's the disparity in how much. And he wouldn't forgive it. And Jesus gives us this parable to give us some sense of the difference between God's mercy toward us and the mercy we are asked to have toward others. You know, when, when you think about it, like for each one of us, we are created in the image of God. And so anytime we sin, we disfigure the image of God within us. And that is very offensive to God, as you can imagine. And, and, and Jesus, because he was given to us by the Father, not only forgives our sins, and if you can imagine an infinitely good God forgiving or disfiguring his image within us, St. Thomas Aquinas would said, that even God forgiving the smallest offenses because of his infinite goodness is an act of infinite mercy. So, but not only does, does God forgive our sins, he also gave us his son, Jesus Christ. And he gives us through the Eucharist, his son, Jesus Christ, every time we come to mass. And for those who aren't able to come to mass, when we make that spiritual communion, we receive in a special way the Son of God into our hearts. I mean, what an act of mercy is that? Infinite mercy. And not only does he forgive our sins and give us his Son, but he also, because of the work of Jesus on the cross and because of the resurrection, he, he incorporates us into the life that he shares with his Son and the Holy Spirit for eternal life. You can see then why Jesus uses this extraordinary sum, 10,000 talents, to try to give us some idea of the infinite mercy with which God treats every one of us. If you think about what God has done for us, you know, whenever I think about what God has done for me, it makes it so much easier to be merciful to those who have hurt us to those who offend us in some way, to those with whom we just can't see eye to eye or we just don't understand. It makes it easier to be merciful. And we are asked to forgive one another. We are asked to be people of mercy. But here's the thing. It's not easy for us to be merciful. 
It's not easy to forgive. It's why Jesus gives it $100, right? Not $1, you know? It's $100, you know? If I saw $100 on the sidewalk, I wouldn't step over it, right? I'd bend down and pick it up. I think most of us would, because it's not nothing. And when we are asked to forgive somebody, it's not nothing. It is $100. It is a difficult thing. It means something. But it pales in comparison to what God has done for us. So what I pray that we're able to do as, as we go through this week is we can maybe consider the mercy, the love that God has for us. And then maybe think about those who have hurt us, those who have offended us, those who have sinned against us, those who need our mercy. And even if it's hard, even if it's difficult, ask the Lord to give us the grace so that out of his infinite mercy, we can share a little bit of it and reflect it in our love and our care for one another. Imagine how much better our world would be, especially these days when there's just not enough mercy going around. If in our own little way, we, we reflected God's mercy, it really would make the world a better place. And now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Oh, I messed that up. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us present to the Lord our needs and petitions for ourselves and for people in the world today. For our church and parish community, that we may share willingly and justly all that God has given us with the poor and those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of nations, states, and cities, that they may work to establish the justice and mercy of God through all the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For families and communities suffering from division, alienation, and estrangement, that they may put aside anger and hate and seek together forgiveness and reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering and the dying, that the kindness and compassion of God may shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have died, that Christ may claim their souls for the kingdom of his Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your love and your mercy. And so we ask that you hear these petitions which we present, and out of your infinite mercy, answer them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, 
for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, look with favor on our supplications, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins, and by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to our, your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your with spirit. spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, 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 peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the making of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Father, life in the body, bring me not to judgment, condemnation, protection, and I have a body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Save for eternal life. Now this is the time during Mass uh, when, as I mentioned earlier, you know, Catholics would receive Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist, and, uh, and I know it's very hard for so many uh, who are home now and just aren't able to come to Mass to receive the sacrament of the Eucharist. So this is when the Church asks us to make a spiritual communion. And that means that Jesus knows how much you would want to receive Him. And He wants to be part of your life. So if you say a prayer where you unite your desire for Jesus in your heart and in your soul through the Eucharist, we believe that in a spiritual way, Jesus comes, visits us, dwells within us, and we call that spiritual communion. The body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life.
And let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you, and with, with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much for joining us for Mass. Um, I know that, you know, as the pandemic drags on, who knows how long, um, you know, it, this will keep going. But we're going to keep trying and we'll, we'll keep having Mass uh, here on, online for as long as we have to. So thank you for joining. Thank you for, for your prayers uh, joined to those of St. John Paul II Parish.